feeling to be in the house of God. And so I just want to welcome each and every one who is here with us this morning. For those visiting for the first time, I just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to have you with us. I want to welcome Tracy, who's with us this morning. It's good to have you with us. I think everybody else is family. So I say good morning, good morning, and good morning. I think that's Peter in the back. Yes. yes. We'll welcome you. We'll welcome you, Peter. Thank you for joining us again this morning. We're so happy to have you with us this morning. Amen. I'm just going to ask you to stand with me. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Glorious God, we thank you this morning, God. We thank you, God, for just being God, just being God in the mix of your people. We thank you, God, because your word is true and that heaven and earth uh, shall pass away, but your word, your word, your word shall stand forever. So, God, this morning we're asking you, God, to speak to us today, God, out of the volume of your book, oh God, so that we may hear the word and be edified by it, Father. We thank you, God, that, Father, you will help us, God, to find rest in your word. Father, you will help us, God, to find rest in you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, because your word says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and he says, I will, I will, I will give you rest. So this morning, Father, we come humbly to you, God, seeking rest for our soul. In the name of Jesus, Father, we come casting down every evil imagination. God, that is not of you. We come casting down the works of darkness and putting on the armor of light. In the name of Jesus, Father, this morning we come. Come, we come, we come, Father. We come uh, like we put on clothes, God, on our body each morning. Father, we come this morning as we clothe ourselves in you. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Father, clothed ourselves with compassion. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Father, we are clothing ourselves with kindness. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we're clothing ourselves with humility, with gentleness, with patience, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, and Father, we are asking you, God, that you would just help us this morning, God, as we enter in, God, to forgive, uh, to forgive, God, because, Father, you don't want us to come with a heavy heart, but, Father, you want us to come light. You want us to come empty. So, God, we are emptying ourselves, God, of everything, God, that is not of you this morning, God, and, Father, we are coming to you empty. So, God, help us, God, to put on love which binds us together in perfect unity, God, in the name of Jesus. Let, let the peace of God rule in our hearts since we are all members of one body. Help us never to be anxious, God. For, Father, your word says to be anxious for nothing. But you say in everything, in everything, in everything, with prayer and supplication, God, with thanksgiving, your word says, let our requests be known to you, God. So, Father God, we are about to make our request be known to you this morning, God. And we are thanking you, God, for the peace, the peace, God, that you are giving us this morning, God. Such peace, God. Such peace, because you woke us up this morning in our right minds, God. Such peace, God. Your word says, arise, shine, for your light has come. And so the glory of the Lord has risen up among us. So, Father, we thank you, God, for your glory this morning. We thank you, God, for your sufficiency of your grace this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we just want to continue to thank you, God, because, Father, by day you direct your love, and by night you watch over us, and you comfort us. Whether we are awake, Father, or we are asleep, God, you are with us. You are a sustainer, provider, deliverer, keeper. Father, even when we are not deserving, God, 
God, you have given us more than we expected. You have given us more. So God, we thank you this morning, God. Let this be a glorious moment in your presence. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Lord, use us for your glory. Use me for your glory, God. Help me speak a word, God, that sends depression running through the door, God. Help me speak a word, God, that chased fear out the door. God, Father, open the floodgates of heaven for us this morning, God. And we're asking, God, that, Father, you would pour out a blessing that we will not have enough room for us to even comprehend, God, what you're doing in our life. So, Father, we thank you, God, that you're going to make it happen swiftly for us this morning, God swiftly God because father your word says when the time is right it says I the Lord will make it happen swiftly I the Lord will make it happen swiftly so father God we thank you this morning for what's about to happen this is our prayer in Jesus name we pray and we say amen 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 of course, I know by now you guys may already figure out what my topic is. You may have already figured that today's topic is uh, I got more than I expected. I got more than I expected. Have anybody been expecting something from God and you got much more than you expected? So much more than you expected or, or, or you may have thought of something. And, and you may have had a need and, and you did not mention it to anybody. But because the Lord knows your thoughts even before the thoughts come to you, the Lord puts your name on the mind of somebody. And that person calls or texts you with some, I mean, really good news. I mean, really good news. And you can say, God, I thank you. I didn't even ask for it, but I got more than I expected. I got more than I expected. God, I didn't petition you for this, but God, I thank you that I got more than I expected. Somebody say, I got more. And so our foundational scripture for today is found in the book of Acts. We're going to go to Acts um, chapter 3. And we're going to look at verses 1 to 10. We're going to look at verses 1 to 10. And we're going to see where someone who had no expectation, as a matter of fact, he was expecting for something else, and the Lord gave him more than he expected. The passage is about a man who had grown accustomed to a certain way of life. And, and, and we, 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 we are not going to judge him. Why? Because scripture explains to us the reason that he had been accustomed to this way of life. Scripture tells us that he was born this way, number one. And number two, Scripture tells us that his deformity did not only cripple his legs, but it crippled his mindset. And so let's delve in a little further so Scripture can really speak to us and explain to us what happened then and what could even happen to us today. Uh, Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. I'm going to read from the NIV, but you can still follow with me. Verses 1 says that one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, which would have been about three in the afternoon. Can you please stand for the reading of God's word? Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those into the temple courts. And verse 3 said, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expect 
expecting uh, to get something from them. And Peter said, uh, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, uh, I give you. And he went on to say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost already. Verse 7 says, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And, and, and when the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to beg. He was sitting out begging at the temple gate called beautiful and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. My God, my God, my God. You may have, you may have your seat. I want to start by saying um, there is no name like the name of Jesus. There is no name like the name of Jesus. There is no other name. There is no one like him. And so because there is no other name like him, we are forced to look up to Jesus who is seated at the right hand of God as Lord and Christ. And even though Jesus is not with us physically, we have to go to him. We have to access him through his name because you and I know that there is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so scripture posits that Peter and John healed a crippled beggar in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth at a moment History was created. When, when God changes a person, when God changes a situation, history happens. When God gives someone an, an astounding testimony, history happens and, 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 and it's called change. Change happens. And when God saw us, you and I know that when we were polluted in, in, in our own blood, he was the one who came and he pulled us out just in the nick of time. And so you know that history was created for you and me. And so I pray that even while we study this text, may God help us to put our faith in Jesus through this passage and create history in the name of Jesus. Verse 1 went on to say that um, we are told that one day, Peter, I'm just going to go through this, the scriptures one more time and explain. We are told that one day Peter and John was going to the temple. And, and at the time of prayer, it may have been about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And it says an amazing transformation took place for Peter and John. No, we know that Peter and John had now become men of prayer. Men of valor, because we know in earlier scriptures, we know that they had difficulty staying awake. They would always fall asleep. Jesus would be praying, but they would be sleeping. But, but, but no, they loved prayer. They loved prayer. They had grown to love prayer because it was through prayer they were able to spend time with Jesus so they had no choice. This was the only way. And so they loved to pray. Not only did they have fellowship with him, but they found that the more they prayed, the more they received strength. Somebody say strength. The more they prayed, the more they received strength. And even as we go through this 22 days of fasting, the more we pray, is the more we're going to receive strength. Amen. The more they prayed, the more they received courage. The more they prayed, the more they received wisdom. And so as a result, they were no longer men of fear. They were who would avoid the temple, fearing those who had killed Jesus. So 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 they 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 were cognizant of a situation that happened prior to. So that put a sense of fear on the inside of them. But no, no, no. The Bible tells us that no, they were able to boldly enter the temple because it was the house of God. 
No, no, I must fit in that we live in a society today. Yeah, that's just a sidebar. We are individuals often become fearful or indecisive because of what they hear or what they perceive. They are fearful to come to the house of God. Yes, they are fearful to come to the house of God. They fear the house of God because sometimes we hear of the so-called acronym church hurt. We hear that a lot. I'm not coming to church because of church hurt. I belong to another church and, and this and this and this happened to me. So I'm not going to anybody's church. I'm not coming because of church hurt. But, but when I looked, I really looked at, at this church hurt. And so I asked the question. I asked myself because, yes, true, sometimes it may be church hurt. You know, and I'm not knocking anyone, but when we look at this acronym church hurt, I ask myself, but people talk about church hurt, but how have you hurt the church? How has you and I hurt the church? We don't think about how we hurt the church, but we think of what happened the, on the other side. Church hurt. I, I, I know I just heard someone said in my spirit, well, wh wh why? What is this about? Okay, the Lord just led me to drop it. We talk about church hurt, but sometimes we need to look within ourselves and see how we ourselves may have hurt the church. And so the scripture tells us, so, so Peter and John were no longer men of fear who were avoided the temple because of those who killed Jesus, they boldly entered the temple because it was the house of God. And so verse 2 says, now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those who were going into the temple. This man was, was born with a situation where he was never going to be able to live a normal life. This man, had he had never stood up one day in his life on his own. He had, he, he had, to, he had never taken a step. He had never gone for a walk. He didn't know what it was to go outside. He, he had never known what it was growing up to run around the pack, to play with other kids. He never knew what it was like to bruise his knees from, from accidental falls. He did not know. He did not know. And so all he could do was watch. He was always isolated and left behind because of his situation. His destination was his destiny was a dusty mat and, and, and so it was like a life of poverty. He just didn't know anything else. And so his era was nothing like what we have today, the amenities and the technologies that are at, that there to help people who are incapable of helping themselves. All he knew to do was throw himself at the mercy of God's people. He would sit outside of the temple, hope to run into someone that was generous enough. He had to depend on his friends or family to carry him every day and every night. And worst case scenario, he had to hope they never forgot to pick him up or leave him because he would have had to spend the night. He was lame, he couldn't defend himself, he was just completely at the mercy of others, literally. And so his life consisted of, of, of hoping, of, of trusting and praying that God's people would have mercy on him and give him enough money that he could survive and not starve to death. And, 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 and the man must have thought, oh my God, because God created men to be the provider and the protector of the family, he must have thought, well, God, you know, how am I going to do this? Why does this have to happen to me? What's even more appalling, and think of all the people that looked down on him, 
as a sinner. You know, people are, are quick to judge. I mentioned earlier, they don't know your story, yet they judge you. They, they've been saying things like, well, I wonder what he did, or oh, I wonder what she did, or oh, I wonder what sort of sin uh, that, that the parents may have committed uh, that God would punish him like this. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. I was watching something on Instagram that says, drink water and mind your business because you don't know. You don't know what the person's situation is. So we cannot judge that. that, that stick with me. Drink water and mind your business. I saw Cor Cora Jakes talking about it. She said, just drink water and mind your business. And so the man, notwithstanding, was in a dire situation. He was, he was hopeless. He was hopeless. He was crippled. And he was mentally lame and a liability to those who would place him at the gate called beautiful. It's imperative that even as we study this transformation of the pitiful cripple, we look within ourselves and have a heart of compassion for the broken condition of those around us who sometimes are in far worse situations that we even know about. Sometimes we really have to have compassion because we don't know what's going on on the inside. We see people and they look good on the outside, but on the inside we never know the war that's going on so we need to have compassion for people sometimes people are lost in bondage of sin blinded by emotion uh, separated um, I'm separated from the life of God and 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 it can be that it was no fault of theirs it's no fault of their own and so uh, by faith uh, one day if we believe, we know that the bandages that cover our eyes, that blind our eyes, will be removed. Amen? It will be removed. But all God is asking us to do is to have faith. Somebody say, I got more than I expected. Watch this. Let's see what happens next. Verses 3 to 5 says, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. Look at us. You know, he, he wanted him to, to, to give him this eye-to-eye -eye contact. He said, look at us. So the man gave them his full attention because, you know, as I mentioned earlier, he was a beggar. So the fact that he said, look at us, he figured, okay, I'm about to get something. Something good is about to happen for me. So, 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 he said, um, um, he must have said, good Lord in heaven, finally, finally, somebody noticed me after all this time. Somebody noticed me. My ankles and my feet never worked. Never was I able to live a normal life. It was only the grace of God that brought me to this place. And I know, I know, I know, finally, Somebody notice me. Is that anybody's testimony this morning? They laid him by the gate called Beautiful outside of the temple because according to Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 18, it tells us that no man who had a defect was able to approach the temple. No one. No man who was blind, nobody who was lame, disfigured or deformed, no man who had a broken arm or foot, no man was able to enter the temple. And if you had a weaved hand, you were treated, you were not treated like anybody else. You were treated as an invalid because of systemic op uh, um, oppression that was prevalent at that time. So, so, so that they deposit him at, at, um, um, at the gate and left him there because he was not able to go any further. And so they called it great beautiful. But, but, but some ugly stuff happened. 
in what was supposed to be a beautiful situation. It did. Because how can this be get beautiful, but a lame person cannot enter? Get beautiful, but a crippled person cannot enter. Get beautiful, yet it's no fault of your own that your arm was amputated, yet you were not welcome. Oh my God. And to be glad that we are welcome into the house of God. We can enter at any time. We can come to him just as we are, crippled or not. Ain't we glad we have a God who doesn't judge us, but he would accept us in the name of Jesus. Ain't you glad? They called it beautiful, but it was just ugly. Have you ever been there? Have you ever experienced something uh, that was ugly in a place uh, that was supposed to be beautiful in a situation, uh, that was supposed to be beautiful in a relationship, uh, that was supposed to be beautiful, and it was supposed to be a beautiful business transaction, uh, but it got ugly. Uh, it was supposed to be a beautiful friendship, uh, but it got ugly. It was supposed to be a place where you could meet beautiful people but it got ugly somebody say it was a place called beautiful same is true in our current environment today we come across people begging on the streets and we leave them at the gate we scorn them because they are dirty or they may be deformed or they don't, we, we don't like how they look at us, so we leave them at the gates. We refuse to evangelize to members of the LGBTQ, forgetting that we serve a God who deals with impossible cases and he can be perform what he say he's going to do. So because of, of, of what we think they are, we leave them at the gate. But you and I must understand that God will do what he say he's going to do. And he will never leave you and I at the gate. Never, 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 never have you ever been to a gate called beautiful. I want to caution anyone who treat individual like crumbs. God says that be mindful. Be mindful. Be mindful because what you consider as crumbs may be the bridge that you must use to get over on the other side. Be mindful. Be mindful. You and I must understand that even Jesus had use for the crumbs. Even Jesus had use for the crumbs. All he asked was that we hand them over to him. We hand them over to him. I don't know who this is for, but God says, if you trust me, I can do a lot with your crumbs in the name of Jesus. If you trust me, somebody say, I got more than I expected. So Peter and John, scripture says, um, 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 made direct connection with the man. They looked straight at him which I am sure got the beggar's attention. And Peter said, look at us. So the man uh, gave them his attention, probably thinking, finally, finally someone is not ignoring me. Finally, I'm, I'm about to get some money. But he was further surprised. Peter did something that he had never expected. This was not his expectation. All he knew is he was going to get money. Nothing else was on his mind. He wasn't expecting nothing else. His hands were outstretched and he was expecting money. But, 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 but Acts 3 verse 6 tells us, uh, Peter said, silver or gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then he says, walk. He says, walk. Oh, my God. The power of the Holy Ghost. He said, walk. Silver or gold, I do not have. But what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Pause. Here we learn a couple of things from Peter. First, 
Peter had compassion for him, whereas most people didn't have the time uh, of day for him. Peter had compassion for him. Uh, Peter tends to, to, to look and, and he connect with those who he could help because this is what he was taught to do. But this guy, he, he, he was um, um, in, a, in a total what we call liability. So, so, so he was ignored, uh, but Peter's humility um, enabled him uh, to be embraced. And so this man, uh, this man was made to feel welcome. Maybe for the first time in his life, uh, he was made to feel welcome. And so, so, so we must understand that he was begging for money. That's what he wanted. Uh, he did not have any. He had no other means of getting any. But Peter, having the mind of Christ, uh, helped him anyway. Just not the way he expected. Peter felt the compassion and he helped him in a way that he needed most. Because money was not what he needed. He needed to walk. He needed to walk. Giving him money could not buy him legs. Giving him money could not allow him to move. At that time, that was not important. And so Peter swore what his real need was. Money would not have solved his problem. He needed to walk. Money could not transform his mind. He needed to be healed in you need to come off of, of, of that beggar spirit and have a mind of Christ. And so Peter saw his need. Peter wanted to get to the root of this man's problem. And so that's what God does for us. When, when we go to him with situation, he gets to the root. Because you know, for a situation to die, you have to attack the root first. That's where it dies. It dies from the root first. And so, 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 so Peter knew only too well what he needed to do. And he knew that Jesus had those solutions. Reason, uh, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Because he knew when we call the name Jesus, there's power, there's authority, there's dominions. So he said, walk. I'm so grateful for all the people God placed in my life that, ha that helped propel me in the name of Jesus. I'm so happy. Do you remember the people who, who poured into your lives and helped you get where you are? Can we just give God a hallelujah for maybe our mothers and fathers and grandparents and pastors and intercessors and loved ones and friends who prayed and stood in the gap for us when we couldn't do it for ourselves? Can we just give God a hallelujah? Can we just thank God for the people who genuinely cleared about us enough uh, that they help us carry our cross uh, through some seasons? Oh my God, my God, my God. When we didn't have the strength to stand, the strength to walk, uh, they cradled us uh, and they watched us succeed. Aren't you happy that we have friends that we can say thank you for helping me? Friends who did not leave us at the gate, but they were the crutches that we needed to get up and walk. It's such a wonderful thing when, when Christians don't just say they're Christians, but exhibit the hallmark of compassion. Somebody say, I got more than I expected. Even Jesus in John 13 and 35 said, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. John 13 and 35. I just thank God for the people who care. I thank God for caring. I thank God for investing in this ministry. I thank God for investing people who are helping us to invest in the church. I thank God for you who carries the vision of this church. I thank God for the apostle, the, 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 the head, the realm of this church. We have so much to be thankful for. Ain't we now just happy that we were not left at the gate beautiful? Ain't we just so happy? Thank you, God. Never you judge or belittle people who are struggling or suffering or grieving. 
They may be between a rock and a hard place today, but God forbid this could be your tomorrow. This could be your tomorrow. Never leave them at the gate. Peter had faith in him in, in the name of Jesus. And so even though Peter didn't have any money, because he said, silver and gold, I have not. Still, he found something to give to the beggar. He gave him Jesus. Anybody need Jesus in this room? Anybody need Jesus in this room? Peter believed that Jesus could help the man walk and that Jesus could solve his life problems. And so when Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he said, walk, that was the proclamation of faith. He was acting on Jesus' behalf as his servant. And so you and I, these are the things we need to emulate in our lives. Someone is sick or we are not feeling well, don't go through your phone looking for someone to call. No, lay hands on yourself and speak the name of Jesus. There is power in his name because the time you're going to use to make a call, you miss your blessing, you miss your healing. That time you could have been on your knees, that time you could have been walking your house, walking around your bed and just proclaiming his name to whatever situation you are going through don't we just love the name of Jesus Peter had been baptized by the Holy Spirit into the name of Christ no he was not his own man but Jesus servant through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit Jesus was working through Peter and so it was Jesus who had healed the man so, you know, we know that Peter couldn't take God's glory because he didn't do it. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that did it through Peter. Peter had grown uh, into a man of faith, uh, fruit of Jesus' discipleship ministry. One of the main points in, in, in Jesus' stewardship had always been to have faith in God. And so the disciples had always been amazed by Jesus' power and authority, especially during the Passion Week when Jesus saw the fig tree that had many leaves but no fruit. Jesus rebuked the tree and the next day it withered from the roots. And so when Peter saw it, he was so amazed and so very excited. And so Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God, I told you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea. And he does not doubt in his heart, but believe that what he says will happen. It will happen. It will, it will, it will. Those of us who are believing for more than enough blessing, have faith in God. Have faith in God. It was by faith that Peter said to the crippled beggar in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. That was a faith proclamation. It is by faith that I am prophesying to everyone, every dry, brittle bone in your life right now. And I am saying, rise up and walk. As a matter of fact, I'm saying leap, which is our theme. Leap. Take a leap of faith. Now is the time for us to leap into situations. Now is the time for us to leap into visions God may have given us now is the time for us to leap into making um, um, a millionaire decisions yeah millionaire connections now is the time for us to take a leap of faith and trust God as we're doing it amen I prophesy again that you were going to walk with a different kind of boldness. I speak that over you. You were going to walk with a different kind of boldness. As a matter of fact, I feel that this word is for Sister Omari. You were going to walk with a different kind of boldness. God is going to take away the shyness from you and you're going to walk with boldness. Amen. You're going to walk with a different kind of boldness because God is going to give you a seat, a different seat, a seat of influence. This is what he's going to do for you. He's going to give you a seat of influence that people are going to listen to you. 
you're going to say something, and because of your faith, you're going to declare something, and it is going to be so. Amen? The beggar stretched out his hand, and he said, Peter, help me. Please, help me. Anything. Please, sir, please, help me with some money. Peter's response was direct. He said, look up. He said, look up, because he wanted the beggar to, 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 to have his undivided attention. He said, look up. And he said to him, silver and gold, have I not? The beggar must have said, well, well, what? You have legs, I'm crippled. All my life, I'm crippled. You're supposed to be a man of stature. You come to the gate, you're able to walk in. I can't. And I'm asking you for money and you're broke? I mean, really? <laughs> really? The beggar must have been saying, well, Peter, like, really? You know, but, but, but somebody say I got more than I expected. Peter again said, silver and gold, I have not. But he said something else. He said something else. He said, what I'm about to give you. Mm, 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 what I'm about to give you. And so I proclaim uh, uh, what I'm about to give you. Uh, um, um, each and every one of you. I prophesy uh, what I'm about to give you. Expect more. Expect more. It doesn't matter what it is you're asking for. Don't just stay in the small. Expect more. Look for the big things. When the small things come, give thanks. When the medium things come, give thanks. When the big thing comes, even give more thanks. Give more thanks in the little. And watch God expand. Watch God expand our territory. Watch God expand the little things into big things. I can't describe what happened, but when Peter said the name of Jesus, something went through the beggar's body. It was power that this man had never experienced before in his life. Remember, he could not stand on his own. He was not even able to make it to the gate called beautiful on his own. He could do nothing. All he had was the capacity to beg, nothing else. But on that day, something happened that he had no words to explain. And so I decree and declare, something is going to happen for us. Something is going to happen for us. If, if you're under the sound of my voice and you believe before the end of this week, something is about to happen for you. Before the end of this fast, something is about to happen for you. Before the end of this month, something is about to change in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I got more than I expected. Peter used the right name, Jesus. All you have to do is drop the right name, Jesus. Your situation can turn around if you drop the right name, Jesus. Your health can turn around if you drop the right name, Jesus. If you drop the right name, Dickiness, I'm, I'm the Vita, your legs will be healed again in the name of Jesus. We're just going to drop the right name name uh, in the name of Jesus and proclaim uh, that your legs are already healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus, you're not going to be concerned about how it feels, but when you look at your leg, you're going to speak to your leg and you're going to tell your leg, I am healed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you're going to drop Jesus on your legs. Amen. The Bible tells us that when we call the name Jesus, demons must tremble. And so if you drop the name Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue confess in the name of Jesus. You might, have, you, you, you might just have a few dollars in the bank, uh, but because you drop the name Jesus, God will give you a millionaire status. Money will be in your account that you never expected. You don't know where it came from, but it is yours. When you call the bank and say, well, I noticed that I have X amount of money in the bank, the bank will say, this is your money. 
This is your money. I proclaim this over you. God is going to give us more than we expected in the name of Jesus. There is something about that name. There is something about that name. I wish I had a witness to help me. There is something about the name Jesus. There is something about that name. There is something about that name, that name, that name that sounds like music to our ear. There is something about that name, the sweetest name we know, Jesus. There is something about that name. What a friend, what a friend, what a friend we have in Jesus. Somebody call his name. Somebody call his name. Somebody call his name. Somebody call his name. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Rose of Sharon. He's the light in the darkness. He's the bright morning star. Somebody call his name. 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 Back in the days, the old folks would say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. They would just be calling on his name, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And for some of you who are old school, you know, when you were a kid and you did something wrong, something malicious, they would have you kneel and they would say, call on his name. So you would just be calling on his name, Jesus, 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 Jesus. There is power in his name. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 19 verse 13 gives us an example where some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits, they tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Peter preaches, I command you out. Error. There's no power in Peter's name. Not you, Peter. This Peter in the Bible. <laughs> There's no power in Peter's name. No power exists in any other name but the name of Jesus. The Peter was inviting Jesus into that moment, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, change history. There's a reason why people will, 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 when they take the Lord's name in vain, uh, use Jesus' name because they know that there is power in his name. And so this is encouraging because Jesus healed when he was on earth. And now uh, he's ascended into heaven can we still get healed? Yes. Yes. Why? Because he's still alive. He's still ruling. He's still reigning. He's still sovereign. He is still Lord. He is still the Lord of our life. He is still Lord. He still hears us. And he still answers us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We know that he is a God who answers by fire. Let's juggle back to, to the scripture for a moment for, for the critical point in verse 7 and 8. It reads, taking him by the right hand, Paul says, I helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. Verse 8 says, he jumped to his feet. In other words, he leaped and he began to walk. Then he followed Paul into the temple's courts, walking, jumping, praising God for what God had done for him because he realized that he was now able to enter in. No longer he was going to be left at Get Beautiful, but he was able to enter in. But at that time, he wasn't even thinking of that. He wanted to praise God for what had happened to him that's all that matters. So he followed them. They didn't have to ask him to come. He volunteered and he went in and he was jumping and he was leaping and he was praising God. And so the reason I mentioned this 
um, 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 critical point is because the lame man, this beggar, glory be to God, he did, he, he did not have, um, um, they did not have to ask him to come into the house of God. He exercised his own faith. He exercised his, his own faith. And maybe if he had not acted on his faith, he probably would have missed his blessings. And that happens to us a lot of time. We ask for stuff, but because we don't have the patience to wait on the stuff, then we miss our blessing. And so we need to be patient. This is a season when we need to be patient because God is about to give us more than we expected. Sometimes in life, we, we miss our blessing again because we are afraid. We are afraid of the opinion of others. We are afraid um, um, to maybe ask. But this is the season where we cannot be afraid. We cannot be afraid. We have to act. We have to have a bold faith. Because when, when we're timid, when we're afraid, we miss the blessing. The Bible tells us about um, 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 Moses in the Bible. He did exactly that. Moses stood on holy ground listening to God speak from the midst of the burning bush. And when God told Moses, I am sending you to Pharaoh to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. Moses started spouting off all the reasons why he could not do it. He was so fearful. He was me, Pharaoh. He said, mm -mm, mm -mm, I cannot do it because of this. I cannot do it because of that. And that and that and that happened to me. But you know, you know, Aras, you know, you know, you know, you know, this is the kind of things that we do. As a matter of fact, Moses told God words to the effect that send somebody else. Send somebody else. And guess what? God gave the task to Aaron. His brother got the blessing because of his fear. Let us not be fearful when it comes to the thing of God. When God gives us a vision, when God speaks, you need to move and move quickly. Never be afraid of God's given assignment. God will use you with your flaws. Flaws and all, he will use us just the way we are. Peter was the vehicle that propelled this man's blessing. Uh, Peter grabbed him and helped him up. Uh, and amazingly, his feet and ankles got strong. God can do something little that makes a big difference. Somebody in this room has, has, has a shout this morning because they may have been waiting for God to do something little. But they can shout because guess what? Your lights in your apartment is still on. When you open the pipe, there is still water flowing through it. Glory be to God. You can shout because maybe, maybe you're not driving a BMW. Maybe you were not able to purchase maybe a Lamborghini during this pandemic. Maybe not. But, but, but your Toyota or Ford or, or whatever you have, it may have been 2001, whatever it is, it still holds gas, the wheel still spins, and you're able to go from point A to point B, and guess what? The repo is not looking for you and me. Glory be to God. Somebody say, I got more than I expected. God may change everything just like that. But you and I must understand that every little thing makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. And so the Bible tells us in verse 9 and 10, it tells us that when the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple called Gate Beautiful. And they were filled with, with, with what a God, gracious God that he had believed in what a gracious God he served. And so the Bible says that they began to do the same thing. They began to do the very same thing. This was the first time he was able to go into the temple because as mentioned before, he was physically disabled. 
But as soon as he was healed, uh, he did not turn his back on God, but rather he set his face towards God. He went into the temple and he worshipped and praised and celebrated the goodness of God. And so he celebrated and people were astonished because this was the same beggar that they may have passed that very day outside the gate. The results of this man's miraculous healing was that God got what was rightfully him. He got the glory. God is about to give you more than you expected today. God is about to give you more than you expected today. But the question is, what will your response be? What will your response be? What will be your response? Will there be any gratitude or betrayal? Will there be? The Bible tells us in chapter 5 that, that, that we are presented with a very similar um, scenario, John chapter 5, we were introduced to a man who had been paralytic for 38 years. And if we are to compare the two healings, though they both had a deformity, their results are very different. The paralytic man, um, um, he had been that way for 38 years. This man was crippled at birth. Both were miraculously healed. However, their attitude were completely different. The 30-year-old, John tells us in, in John chapter 5, verse 15, 5, 16, went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. He betrayed Jesus. And so because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jews persecuted Jesus. Imagine, in contrast, when the man who was lame from birth, when he was healed, he went into the temple and he worshipped. And he thanked God. He thanked God. And it says the place was filled with wonder and amazement. Again, I ask, when God gives you more than you expect, we need to take a leap and we need to rejoice in the name of Jesus. We need to be thankful in the name of Jesus. If we learn nothing else today, we need to have a spirit of, of, of gratitude for what God is doing in our lives. In the mornings when, when we open our eyes and we realize we can see, we have to have a spirit of gratitude because we did not wake ourselves up. God gave us another opportunity of something called life. So we need to be grateful and we need to thank God for waking us up this morning. We need to thank God that we are able to see we need to thank God because others went to bed and did not wake up. Can you, uh, can, can you, can you think of putting a alarm clock to someone's ear who is dead? But he woke us up in our right minds. So we have to be thankful. A miracle may happen right now in front of us or even to us. And if, if our attitude isn't right, we are going to miss the blessing. We are going to miss the blessing. I just gave you the example of what happened with the two men. Though both were healed, there was one who was spiritually sick. Spiritually sick. And so you must understand that spiritually sick people don't know what their real problem is. And as a result, this, this spiritual sickness, um, 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 if allowed, it festers. It festers because how, how can someone heal you? And then you go and you turn on the person. How is it possible? How is it possible? And so I, I just want you to, to um, just talk to you a little bit about four types of spiritual, spiritual sickness that are very prevalent even today. We have to know about spiritual wombs, what is called spiritual wombs. When people talk about church hurts, that spiritual womb. 
when 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 we we're hurt by by family members and uh, uh, when, when um, um individuals are allowed to to bleed on us that spiritual womb then we have spiritual malnutrition that's believers who do not grow in their faith, and so they become malnourished, spiritual malnutrition. Then we have um, 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 spiritual um, 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 deformity, basically. These are believers who become rigid in, in their faith, seeing their spiritual life or church like only through the lens of their own experience, thereby creating a stiffness that can only lead to become a spiritual cops. Be mindful. Be mindful. And then we have a spiritual virus. We have what is called a spiritual virus, looking fine on the inside, but yet carrying the disease on the inside. And the thing is that doctors confirm that the most contagious period of a virus is usually when the symptoms do not start showing. There is no symptom, but the disease is on the inside. But no symptoms. That's the worst kind of virus that can see that. Because when, when it shows its face, we're able to do something about it. When it shows its face, we're able to get healing. But when it's hidden on the inside, there's nothing we can do. There is nothing we can do about it. And so I want to, to delve in even further because this is not the, 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 the focus of my discussion for today, but I want just for edification purposes to show you that the, the kinds of spiritual sickness that can easily spread. Easily, easily, easily spread. And I'm so glad that we've been given a promise by God that this ministry will not go through this in the name of Jesus. We will not go through those things. In the name of Jesus. We need to understand that in, 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 in the church, um, outside of the church, what's more relevant is a relationship with the Father. That's paramount. Having a relationship with God first. That's very paramount. And so the reason Peter and John were able to heal was because of the relationship they had with Jesus. The example is, is in, in their prayer life. is in the beginning of the, the passage. Their, the, their will, the, the, that zest that they had was because they spent time with God. They were in sync with the Father. And so they were able to emulate and they were God's power was able to work through them because they had spent time with him. And so God is just asking us to spend time with him, spend time in his presence, especially now that we are going through this fast, spend time with him. It doesn't matter if it's five minutes. It doesn't matter if it's when you're on your lunch break, when you're driving to work, coming from work, whatever it is, just spend some time in prayer. We know that we need a vine, and, 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 and we know that um, um, he is the vine, and we are only the branches, but yet we are connected. There's a connection there with the Father. And so in closing, I just want to say to you, don't take this fast lightly. Don't take this fast lightly. Connect with the source. You and I must understand that everyone is going through something. You don't have to be ashamed of yours. I don't have to be ashamed of mine because we are all going through something. We are all in a process. We are all transforming into higher. We are all transforming into better expressions of oneself. And so we must understand that this is the year that you're saying, I'm worth better. You're going to speak to yourself and you're going to say, I'm worth better. 
I'm worth more. This is the year that you're going to introduce yourself to yourself and you're going to say, I deserve better. I am worth more. This is going to be the way you're going to speak to yourself. Don't let the habits of your past stop you from, from, from this metamorphosis. You are better. What separates us is, is, is the transformation possibility of change. Because change is what really matters in our life. The desire to evolve, the passion to get off of the ground, the, 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 the passion for us to stop eating dirt, the passion for us to, to stop being left at the gate, but for us to get up, for us to leap, take a leap of faith in the name of Jesus. God is asking us to take a leap of faith. We normally say new year, new me, new attitude, new mindset. But can we stick to those words? Can we emulate those words? The real battleground of our life is always in our mind. That's where the fight begins. We, 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 we lay down with it. We get up with it. We go to work with it. We smile with it. We, 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 we speak to people with it and nobody knows the gunfire that is going off in our head. It's only God. It's only God. Your destiny will never be defeated by what people say about you but you will be defeated by what you say about yourself. That's very important going forward. What you say about yourself matters. Amen. What people say about you, it does not matter. This is the reason God said, uh, I am giving you more. This is the reason he says, I am giving you more. Better days are ahead in 2022. I am giving you more. 2022 is going to be glorious for me. It's going to be glorious for you. I am giving you more. And so even as I close, I release over every single parent more than you expected. More. I release over every struggle more than you expected in the name of Jesus. I release over every person who may be in a depressed state more than you expected. Someone grieving because there may be a death in the family more than you expected. Someone who is broken more than you expect. I release it. I release it over you. You're about to get more than you ever expected in the name of Jesus. Has anyone been blessed today? Has anyone been blessed today? Has anyone been blessed today? Somebody say, God, I thank you that I'm about to receive more than I expect in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Apostle, I pass it back on to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say more. Somebody say more. Somebody say, God, I thank you for it. Come on, somebody say more. Hallelujah. Somebody say more. Somebody say more. Amen. Amen. I don't know if it's coming from my mic. Come on, somebody say more. Do I have anybody? The woman of God just said more. Come on. She said more. Come on, more than I expected. Help me, hallelujah. Somebody say more, more, more. How many of you desire more? How many of you are expecting more? More of the presence of God. Come on, more of his glory. Do you want more? He says more belongs to you. He says more belongs to you. More, more belongs. That one sounds so much better. Somebody say more. Somebody say more. Come on, say more. Say, God, I need more of you. Say, God, I desire more. Say, God, more, more. Say, more intimacy. Say, more, say, more. Say, God, more, more. I say, I desire to be more intimate with you. Somebody say more. 
Somebody say more. Somebody say more. There's more of his glory that's going to be released. Say, there's more for me in 2022. Say, my eyes have not seen and my ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart. The things that God has for evangelist Efanella, the things that God has for prophetess Tracy, the things that God has for Deacon James, the things that God has for evangelist Amari, the things that God has. Somebody say more the things that God has in for minister Peter in the name of Jesus but upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail somebody say more somebody say more somebody say I have to have more the man got up leaping how are you getting up look at your neighbor and say it's time to get up say it's time to get up somebody, it's time say it's my time and say, neighbor, if you can't get up, I'll help pull you up. Come on, say, neighbor, if you can't get up, I will help pull you up. And you can't pull no one up until you are up. Say, neighbor, because I'm up, you now have been resurrected. Say, neighbor, because I'm up, I have now the authority to pull you up say neighbor I am pulling you come on I'm pulling you into your new season I'm pulling you into your 2022 I'm pulling you into your best so I'm pulling to your more so I'm pulling you into your more than I expected so I'm pulling you into your more than I expected so I am pulling you say so if you can't pull yourself up I got enough on me to pull you in to your okabashotoma rekeshutunabata I got enough and I I'm glad that they had enough because they had power in prayer if you got power listen if you got prayer you can pull something Lady Davida how does your feet feel come on you're gonna walk on it because Jesus just did it y'all don't understand I had surgery come on God almighty when I can move and bob now come on remember when you're apostle was on crutches now come on in the name of I speak straight to your ankle I speak straight to your ligaments in the name of Jesus every every cell every 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 cell everything 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 in the in the bone everything in the muscle everything in the tissue everything in the organ in the name of Jesus when you begin to just move begin to just move your feet in a circular motion Father, in the name of Jesus, you said, is there anything too hard? And your daughter has been praying. She has been praying. She has been praying. Now we release the fire. I decree and I declare that you will sense fire in your feet. You will sense fire in every tissue. You will sense fire in the, in the bone. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, God, set your fire to her feet. Thank you, evangelist. Set your fire, your Holy Ghost fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you said, if we pray and believe, you're able to do it. And God, we serve a God that is able to do the exceedingly, the abundantly, above and that which I can ever ask. Come on. There's an exceeding upon you. There's an exceeding release. We decree and declare an exceeding Exceeding release, an exceeding release, a power release. We declare the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm not just gonna talk about the power. I am gonna be the power. Come on, open up your spirit and say, God, use me as your power cord, as your power release in the name. Oh, we worship the name of the Lord. Pastor, every time I hear you teach what I love about her is the is the depth that she goes in I decree a John Wesley wind and a John Wesley prophetic unction upon your life prophetess I prophesy that even when you kneel when you stand 
in the name of Jesus that you are going to be speaking to the bones when you get up out of your bed in the name of Jesus and when God calls you to move in the realm of the spirit that bones will be drawn back I decree and I declare oh great woman of faith in the name of Jesus may the Lord as God used John Wesley so God used seal your grail in the name of Jesus come on say God as you use John Wesley say use me come on John Wesley was an activator come on John Wesley activated revival in the name of Jesus your anointing is great the power that you walk in is great the wind that you carry is great let nobody be fooled she's a juggernaut in the spirit why because of prayer in the name of Jesus and this kind going out because when I needed her when I could not bear it she was the one that was able to bear it so I could get back to the place come on church in the name of Jesus I prophesy greater may you be greater than your apostle and when one comes after you you're going to prophesy upon them that they'll be greater than you that's what God told us I hear the Lord say you're going to be coming up after her I hear God said you are going to be coming up after her there's something I want you to come here I want you to lay your hands on her I'm moving in the prophetic I want you pastor to lay your hands on her I hear the Lord that says there's something that he's transferring from you to her put your hand on her belly her spirit man in the devil shikaba in the name of and just pray in the name of Jesus softly softly Somebody say it's done. In the name of Jesus, you receive it. The Holy Spirit said something great has left pastor and been released to you. In the name of Jesus, may you leap in 2022. May every area of your life leap in the name of Jesus. Somebody say I got more than I expected. Amen. I want you to put up Genesis 3. Get your tithe. I had challenged you last week. Don't forget the last Sunday of this month. I want you to bring. Some of you have already started giving for the rent. Thank you. Don't forget you're bringing a seed for the rent. I want you to put up Genesis 43. I want us to read from verse 21, 23. And I want to bless what you're going to release. Genesis 43. Everyone stand when you have your offering. I want to release this over this house amen hallelujah the rent amen how many of you are gonna contribute a little more to the rent the last Sunday you can bring it the last Sunday or if you have it today but I want to declare this and it came to pass when they had come to the end that we opened our sacks everything in your bank account I'm prophesying um, the woman of God, prophetess said, it's going to show up in your bank and God is going to say it's for you. How many of you receive that? Amen. We prophesy the uncommon. How many of you receive it? In the name of Jesus, when you open up our sacks, someone say our sacks, and behold, every man's what? Every man's what? Every man's what? was in the mouth of their sack. Everything that you lost, everything that was cut off in 2021, we decree restoration for 2022. We decree that it's going to be increased. Say, God, increase what is in 
my sack. How many of you are looking for an increase? Says the sack of his mouth, our money, come on church, our what? Money in what? Full weight. How many of you are looking for a full weight? In the name of, in the fullness, the full weight. Listen. So I was talking to the Lord. Can I do a quick, a quick testimony? I said, Lord, I need you to do something for me. How many of you pray to God and, and, and you say, sometimes you will say stuff and you're like, God, I'm waiting. So I said, God, I need you. I need an, an increase. Someone say increase. As I'm praying for the increase, I get an email. Church, I get an email. The, the Miami-Dade College says if you've taken your booster shots, if you've taken not one, not two, but your booster Upload it. We're about to give you some money. Y'all not happy. Y'all not happy enough. Y'all not happy enough. I was talking to the Lord about something that I needed. And I said, God, because, because he opened up another door. And I said, God, I need something quick. I don't know about you, but after we after we have prayed and preached and, and decreed, we need to do something greater. And it takes funds to be able to do it. So, so the immediate, listen, I was the first. I got the card so quick, the card fell out the hand. I took the picture so quick, the picture. I took the front and the, y'all not helping me up in here. Because I didn't, listen, Miami Dade has money for me. And everything that Miami Dade College has, in the, I'm going to receive it. There's some places that has money. Listen, the woman of God preach. Oh, listen, more I got more than I expect. Just like the man got more than he was expecting. Peter said, I don't got silver and gold, but I give you what I have. So sometimes it's going to be silver and gold. Sometimes it's going to be a spiritual increase. Sometimes it's going to be a spiritual transfer. Somebody say, more than enough so all of a sudden uh, mommy they had never done this before why because i released a word into the atmosphere come on church and said god i need you to do something for my household and so the word carried the word to the president of the college made the president of the college loose the funds let me ask y'all something is are your job giving you money for taking vaccine is your job let me know if your job is your, is your job giving you money? Amen. So your job is giving you money. Who else's job is giving them money? So may the job release to you and me what rightfully belongs. Vaccine or no vaccine. In the name of Jesus. Vaccine or no vaccine. But I took mine. And, and I'm fine. Come on church. Somebody say the full weight. The full weight. We decree and declare the fullness. Father, as they give, as especially the tithers, those who are consistent with their tithing, as they give, as they sow, as they plant, as God, we ask that you water. And God, we ask that you do something uncommon. You said the wealth is laid up for the just. And so, God, you are laying some stuff up for us. Somebody say fullness in Jesus' mighty name. Put it in with expectation in Jesus' mighty name. Let the church say amen. you so much for giving for those of you who are online we're still on are we still live amen for those of you who are online I want to tell you how much I love you I know D, I know um, sister Evangeline is watching minister Evangeline how much we love you those of you who are connecting with us we love you we thank you for your serving we thank you for being with us we thank you that there is no us without you we want to say how much we love you. Thank you for giving online. Thank you for sowing into this great house. Thank you so much. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Somebody say full weight. Father, I decree the full weight 
of everything that your people have sown, what they will give towards this house and what they will continue to give in the name of Jesus. Let the full weight, as your prophetess released a mighty word today, Father, we expect more than we even imagine I got more than enough and so God let the more rest upon your sons and daughters in Jesus' name we say amen we're about to leave this place but I want you to tarry just a little bit more for me Deacon Leroy and Deacon Deaconess Maxine come forward thank you God amen it's good when you have leaders that will serve amen Leaders that will give of their time, amen. Leaders that will give of their treasures, amen. Leaders that will serve. So